Hello geeks and ghouls. You know what, there are a lot of videos about the best and the most disturbing horror books out there and depending on who is making those videos you can get books that are made for hardcore horror fans, gore hounds who only get pleasure out of the tears of normies uh, falling through some of the books they're reading and <laughs> getting shocked or by totally non-gore hound readers who read some books that are very disturbing so depending on which video you watch you may get into some uh, hardcore like The Resurrectionist uh, or I don't know, something like Sharp Objects by Jill Flynn. And don't get me wrong, Jill Flynn is definitely very disturbing. This is a very disturbing book, but not extreme horror. So I decided that let me make a video about a top 5 of uh, extreme horror books or probably splatterpunk horror books because that's the mainstream uh, extreme horror genre that are very friendly to newcomers and maybe they'll give you a taste on what you like about extreme horror or maybe a little test of am I ready to go into extreme horror or should I stay with Stephen King and Dean Koontz and there's nothing wrong with King or Koontz there are a lot of wrong with Koontz but let's get not get we're talking about five books to get you into extreme horror and book number one I mean if we're talking extreme horror or splatterpunk there is only one author to talk about and this is Clive Barker and Clive Barker if you're not old enough to remember he used to sell Stephen King numbers of books back in the 90s and the 2000s despite being very gory and he's mostly well known for for Hellbound Heart which was adapted in the movie Hellraiser which is it's definitely a horror movie you've heard about so, what is The Hellbound Heart? The Hellbound Heart is a novella. It is, in my opinion, a, mo a modern gothic tale about a man who is trying to reach forbidden pleasures. And But that's the beginning of the story because his essence, uh, like most evil, has not died and it returns to haunt those who were close to him and uh, this book is perfect to begin with extreme horror it's very short it's very evocative in its imagery so there is a lot of blood and gore and uh, souls torn apart and all those perfectly nice things it's definitely extreme for its time back in the mid 80s i think it was in, uh, published in 1986 right 1980s or 1987 uh, especially with the way it blurred the lines between sex and violence but you know what this movie that he made out of this book it has been so mainstream by today that most of the extreme parts of it are canon to horror or to certain subcultures everything extreme about this book is not that extreme anymore so definitely a safe read to try your luck with extreme horror. Book number two is one of those books that is almost always in extreme horror book lists for a good reason, and that's The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketsam. This book is based on a true crime, so no devils, no boxes that unleash demons from hell, or any of, this, of the other fantasy crap that we often see in horror. If you're a fan of uh, crime or true crime, uh, it's definitely a book you may want to consider. It is based on the case of uh, Sylvia Likens, and it actually sighs away from some of the more extreme aspects of the true case. But don't worry about it, this book is harrowing. It's very disturbing, uh, there is a lot of description of torture, of uh, sexual abuse, of, uh, but it's basically a character study of sorts about cruelty and power and insanity and is told through the eyes of the boy next door who, like the reader, he cannot stop watching something that he knows it's wrong. It's definitely a very disturbing book, a book you should read with caution because uh, it can scar you and it gets to some very dark places uh, so definitely a horror book like um, chapter 42 is not a chapter it's a chapter to read 
And yeah, there's a lot of uh, atrocities happening in this run. And thinking about this, this is a real case, it makes it even worse. It's also a very character-driven book. It's very... Um, the, the writing is very uh, snappy. It's uh, very easy to read. Uh, and the way it's written, it's very effective because it's very simple writing, but it manages to convey a lot of what is happening. And it kind of reminds me a bit of Stephen King, only, you know, much leaner in prose. So, definitely a very good place to start with extreme horror. And maybe it's a good place to stop with extreme horror because that's the most nuanced book of this uh, list. Because if we want to go into sheer insanity, there is always American Psycho by Brandy Stanellis. If you're like, I'm not reading problematic authors, you can skip this one because Brandy Stanellis is definitely problematic about some of the things you have said. But uh, this book is mostly literary. Uh, it can either be read like a book straight out of a very disturbed mind or as a satire of Leonie Barrel Yapis with a lot of gore and blood and guts thrown in there. Either way, there are some very gruesome murders in this one, very misogynistic too. So be warned, it's no joke. And maybe it's... Uh, I don't know if it's a very good book to jump in. It's definitely a popular book. It's easy to find it. It's not an easy read. It's maybe a litmus test uh, that if you read this one and not like it, there is no way in hell you like extreme horror books or maybe you just loved it and uh, you're one of us. Uh, I can tell you that when I read this book I was already a hardened horror fan and I was very disturbed by it. And yeah, both this one and uh, Girl Next Door are in my top 10 disturbing books out there, so be warned. But if you're a literary reader and you want to go into, you've read some of the literary horror books like The Fisherman or House of Leaves and you're like, I want to go into what's the most extreme I can get, it's this one or maybe Zombie by Carol Oates. But that one is not just, uh, I wouldn't consider it an extreme horror book. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a place to go. Not sure if it's the best, it's the mildest star. It's probably the most extreme because this book is bonkers. And speaking of bonkers, but in a bit, in a more entertaining way, we have The Fog by James Herbert. This is a book from the 70s. It's definitely nasty and pulpy fun. There is a virus that escapes a military facility. And when it comes into contact with uh, people, it turns them into maniacs and mayhem ensues. Uh, this book is definitely not a deep, not a bleeding read. It's definitely pulpy trash, not highbrow entertainment at all, but it's a fun read. It does not shy away from violence, from the gore, from the sleaziness. It's all a 13 year old boy wants to read and doesn't want his parents to find out about or a girl I don't know used to I was a 13 year old boy once and I can only speak for myself uh, but yeah there's a lot of wonkiness in this one uh, definitely it's trash but it's very entertaining trash and it's high quality trash which is a hard thing to find out there and it's a solid read by a master of the genre I mean, uh, there were other uh, authors in the era who did the same thing, like Sun Hudson or uh, Guy N. Smith or Richard Lehman, and none of them is considered a master of horror. James Herbert is considered one, so that should tell you something. This book is definitely a uh, very fun read if you want to go, if you want to try one of those um, notorious, trashy British book from the 70s and the 80s. And you won't miss out, it's very entertaining. Finally, um, if you're a Stephen King fan and or you like post apocalyptic books, you can always try Swan Song by Roger McCammon, a name that if you're in Horror Tube, you've definitely been hearing lately a lot. Uh, because of the people that discovered his work. Swan Song is a classic of post-apocalypse. It uh, I haven't read the stand by Stephen King, 
but people compare those two books because both are huge, both are post-apocalyptic, but Swan Song is about humanity trying to survive the aftermath of a nuclear war. And there are supernatural elements too, because there is the man with the crimson eyes and also one girl, Swan, who holds the hope of restoring the Earth within her. So yeah, there are a lot of tropes of post-apocalypse, a lot of uh, stuff uh, like, you know, people traveling, trying to survive, um, cannibals and uh, armies of um, post-apocalyptic Nazis, uh, all those themes, but at the same time, there is, on top of it, there is this layer of extreme violence, of gruesomeness, and there are some social themes that are addressed and these are things very closely associated to Splatterpunk. So if you're like, I want to try an extreme horror book, but not too extreme, this is where you go, especially if you like Stephen King and Robert McCammon is definitely a treat and you should look further into him. But yeah, this is Big McCammon, uh, at least in the horror genre, and it's a good place to start. So I hope you find the you found this list helpful and if you have any other suggestion for good books for a beginner to start reading extreme horror leave a comment below as always thank you for watching and stay spooky